Welcome to another informational video on Handsphere 4.0. Each of my videos will start with this same short section on what is Handsphere 4.0. Well, as a Handsphere 4.0 user and a licensed amateur radio operator, I look at it this way. Handsphere 4.0 is to ham radio what an advanced flight simulator is to flying. It's a simulation, but it's an incredibly realistic simulation. Handsphere 4.0 includes simulations of how the sunspots affect the ionosphere using current real sunspot numbers. It, it simulates the multiple paths that signals take through the atmosphere, getting from one location to another. And it even simulates the behavior of different types of antennas. You use all of these things in Handsphere 4.0 as you experienced an incredibly realistic simulation of ham radio. This video is about operating split frequency. It'll cover why it's done on uh, real ham radio and how to do it also in Handsphere 4.0. Uh, first of all, what is split and why to do it? There is a great video up on YouTube that uh, says it better than I can. Um, if you search YouTube for 20 meters split frequency or something of the sort, you'll find these uh, a couple of different videos by uh, Pin G0 VQY. Um, and this one here, VK6IA working split frequency on 20 meters, shows it really well. And uh, I would recommend going to this video and watching it. If you've never thought about split frequency operation or uh, you've wondered exactly why it's used, uh, this is a great video. Uh, I'm just going to show a couple of short clips from it, uh, but I do recommend that you go watch it. So, first of all, working split frequency just means that you're transmitting on one frequency and receiving on another. In this example, uh, VK, VK6IA, who is uh, creating quite the pileup, he's transmitting on 14189, um, and he's listening up around 5 kilohertz, around 14,194. Um, this spike here on uh, this receiver's band scope where the line is, uh, this shows uh, VK6IA's transmit frequency. So everybody in the pileup is listening on this frequency except for VK6IA. So everybody can hear him quite clearly as shown in this uh, part of the video here. So uh, that was the DX station. Now the the pileup, when he uh, says that he wants to take another call, the pileup of stations are uh, going to appear here in this area, five about five kilohertz up. And when the pileup is transmitting, you would have very little hope of being able to hear the DX station, VK6IA, saying anything. If he was trying to come back to one particular station or if he copied a, a partial call and, and he was trying to get that station to give him the rest of his call, the problem is that uh, since everybody is normally on one frequency, uh, basically he can't hear very well, which is the same problem when he's operating split, he still has a pileup to deal with, but also the people in the dial pileup can't hear him, which makes things even worse. So um, this, uh, the person that made this video shows an example of what the pileup sounds like. Um, and so this is what VK6IA is listening to when he asks for calls. But imagine if this was happening on the same frequency he was transmitting on, then it would make it hard to hear when he transmitted. So this is what he hears when, when he takes calls. And so that's an example of why it's hard to run a pileup. It's because out of all of that he needs to get at least a couple of letters, partial letters of a call sign in order to come back to someone. And then because he's transmitting uh, down in a kind of open area uh, down here, then at least when he comes back to someone, everybody can hear him and they can know, hopefully, to stop transmitting. Operating split doesn't solve bad operators. It doesn't solve people uh, calling over and over again and not listening. It doesn't solve people calling when it's not, when he's obviously not coming back to them. Um, but at least it gives a better chance of the people in the pileup who are trying to operate correctly uh, a chance to hear the DX station. Now, 
Um, so ha having all that said, uh, why not operate split? Well, mostly the reason is because it occupies more of the band. Um, on real uh, ham radio, that's not too much of a problem because the bands are quite wide, and there's usually the fact that you uh, take an extra 5 kilohertz to spread out this uh, pileup is probably not uh, that big of a problem. On Hamsphere 4.0, uh, the bands are only um, 100 kilohertz wide. Uh, so, for instance, a 10 meter band goes from 28400 to 28500. And so, um, if there was a 5 kilohertz split on there, especially if you allowed for a little bit of uh, splatter on each side, uh, then you could see it could take up quite a bit of the band. So that's the the argument against split. But sometimes it's the best way to deal with a de-expedition or other uh, huge pileup. Um, so now if, sh if you watch that video, you'll see uh, a great example of, of how split is done and why split is done. But uh, probably what you mostly want to know is how do you do that on uh, Hemisphere 4. The answer is, uh, the secret is in these uh, buttons on your, this is the default transceiver. So this is exactly what everybody gets when they get Hemisphere 4. It's included for free. On the VFO knob, uh, there is the L, R, and T buttons, and also R equals T. On the band scope, there's also an L, R, and T. And on the VFO frequency display, there is an R and T. And uh, what these are is the, the VFO knobs obviously used for uh, adjusting your frequency. Clicking on the band scope is also used for adjusting your frequency. And the LCD is obviously used to display your frequency. Well, normally, by default, the VFO knob, the band scope are both in L mode, which uh, I, I uh, call linked or locked. Uh, basically, it means that you're trusting both receive and transmit. Um, and, and normally, the uh, LCD displays your receive frequency, but since they're equal, um, clicking on the T to show your transmit frequency, it doesn't change anything. So, now, Let's say you're that rare de-expedition and you want to operate split. You want to transmit on one frequency and listen up five from there. So let's say you're uh, operating on 28450 is where you're going to transmit and you want to move the pile up away from you. So you decide you're going to listen up five. Well, how do you do that? Well, first of all, we said you want to transmit on 28450. So your transmit frequency is fine. You want to move your receive frequency. There's two ways. You could click on R on the knob and start tuning up, you know, turning the knob until you get to uh, 455. Uh, I have a little bit of trouble, you know, dialing up these exact frequencies on the knob, but there I did it. Okay. Um, let me tune it back down. You can see the two lines on the band scope uh, are. Uh, are showing the red line shows your transmit frequency and the green line shows your receive frequency so that's a great way to know that you're split um, I'm gonna put the VFO knob back on linked or locked and uh, I'm gonna do it the way that I find easier so again we we want to transmit on 450 we want to listen up 5 when when stations say that up 5 up 3 up 10 it means that many kilohertz up from their transmit frequency so we're gonna listen at <laughs> we're going to listen at 28455 so look at this the red line shows where I'm going to transmit the green line shows where I'm going to receive it's that simple and if you uh, on the default rig you have the one frequency display you can switch you can say alright I'm transmitting on 450 I'm receiving on 455 and then uh, now let's say you've done that and you're done operating um, then you can uh, click this button here R equals T to put your receive and transmit back on the same frequency and then click on L so that your band scope is back to uh, changing both of them at the same time when you when you click uh, so that's if you're the DX station if you were tuning along and you found the de-expedition 
and the operator was you could hear them on uh, 28450 and you're thinking oh boy I better talk to this guy and you get ready to transmit but then you hear him say listening up five well you don't want to transmit on his frequency all you're gonna do is interfere with him and he's not gonna hear you um, it happens it happens by accident people who even know that the station is operating split will accidentally transmit on their frequency now the good news is the DX station will see a spike uh, on his transmit frequency when he's not transmitting and he'll know that somebody has made that mistake and he will he will reiterate I'm listening up five so you're like I want to talk to this guy I know that I need to listen to him here but he's listening up five kilohertz therefore I'm gonna change my transmit frequency to so here I show my transmit frequency and I've done it I'm now going to listen to him here and I'm going to transmit up here where he is listening and uh, that's all there is to it it's actually harder to explain really than it is to use once you once you play around with it and try it and uh, it really does work I have a couple of examples uh, that we set up it didn't didn't have a real the expedition to work and I didn't qualify as a de expedition but I worked uh, with uh, a friend on Hansphere uh, VA7FT Tim uh, in uh, British Columbia and uh, we uh, show in these clips how to operate split both from being the one that originates the uh, split and the one that is uh, is trying to work someone who's operating split alright so in this example I'm pretending to be some rare DX station and I know I'm gonna get a huge pile up so I'm gonna operate split I'm gonna transmit on 14225 and I'm going to listen up five is what I'll tell people which means I want my transmit to be 225 and uh, you can see that here and I want my receive to be uh, 230 so I'm gonna click here that I want to change my receive frequency and I'm gonna click on 230 so now you can see the red one for transmit the green one for receive so you can see here receive is 230 transmits 225 is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? So you can see my transmit spike on 225. All right, this is WB70 ECW testing a split operation, pretending to be the rare DX station that's uh, listening up five. I'm transmitting on 14225. I'm listening up five, which, which would be 14230. Uh, this is WB7 ECW listening. WD7 ECW, this is Victor Alpha 7 Fox Fox Tango, DA7 FT. Do you have a copy? Okay, thank you for the call, VA7FT, this WB7ECW. Yes, no problem, perfect. Uh, I copy you fine. Your signal spike showed up on 14230. It shows that I am, in fact, running a split operation, transmitting on 225 receiving on 230 and I'm copying you fine and I'm assuming that you are also split right now with your receive frequency set to 225 and your transmit set to uh, 230. Uh, back to you VA7FT, this is WB7ECW. <coughs> uh, with 7ECW, Victor Alpha 7 Fox Tango, that's the USL. Um, receive frequency 14225 and transmit frequency 14 at 230. Okay, so I'm going to go back to non split mode by clicking the R equals T. And uh, here's a signal spike at 14218. Whoops. I heard a, a station there. I think it's. Uh, Tim pretending to be the DX station but I need to listen to where he I need to copy him again to see where he said he was listening Canada, uh, running quick frequency on 218 and listening a plus five up Okay, he says he's listening. He said he's listening up five, so I need to put my transmit up five, which is two twenty-three. 
a VA7FT, a VA7FT, this WB7ECW. So I got my receive at 218. Transmit 223. Okay, thanks for returning my call. Uh, that worked great. I heard you on 218. You said you were listening up 5. I uh, changed my uh, mode on my band scope here to transmit uh, and clicked and moved the red uh, line up uh, to 223. And now I'm transmitting on 223 and listening to you on 218. So that worked very good. And uh, thanks for uh, thanks for doing that, Tim. V7FT, this WB7ECW. Charlie Whiskey, Victor Alpha, Tepo for the attorney. Uh, your signal report on uh, my side is a 532 to a 55. Okay, Roger. Yes, I forgot that. Thank you for the signal report. You are uh, peaking up to 57. Um, so I'm going to actually put you in the logbook. I'm curious to see what frequency it enters. It puts 223 as the frequency, so it's putting in my transmit frequency, which I guess is fine because. Um, uh, that's the frequency that I should probably log that I was transmitting on and I'm logging you here as a 57 um, without spotting you because logging is now quite easy without spotting uh, uh, maybe another test we could do uh, to see if it actually uh, confirms the contact um, is to exchange two FL cards on a split frequency is, yes you have a good point there so I did log you. Um, it picked one of our two frequencies to put you in. And I'm going to go ahead and click S and send you a card. Um, and it should work because, I mean, you can just you can just put in 20 meters as the band, as the frequency. You can just say 20M and it'll work. Uh, and there I just sent you one and I show a green R that I received one from you. So... Uh, I'll just turn it back to you and make sure you've got both cards in your logbook, uh, Tim. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, do it. Well, it went to the right entry anyways, because I logged in on uh, 14290 earlier. Um, and I was worried that it might go into that uh, slot because we hadn't exchanged cards on that uh, particular one. So uh, I'm done operating split for now. I'm going to click R equals T to set them both, the red and the green lines, to the same. Um, and uh, I have, uh, Tim wants to talk to me on 14290. I'm just going to click here on 14290. You can see I have just the one line. Victor Alpha 7 Fox Tango on uh, uh, 14290. Now if you are going to make a regular habit of operating split for some reason, uh, you might want to um, Go into the editor and uh, go to the uh, to the shop and um, get the uh, LCD display that n not the memory one but the smaller one um, and keep uh, two frequency displays on your rig at all times. Uh, one of them displaying receive mode and one of them displaying transmit mode, and uh, that makes it a little bit easier uh, even with the green and red lines sometimes it gets a uh, can get a little confusing um, and uh, whereas if you do it this way uh, you can see that you're transmitting on 28450 receiving on 28455 and uh, it's right there uh, showing you this all the time just by adding this uh, one uh, other plug-in and putting it on your rig in the editor so that's, uh, that's uh, the uh, why and how to operate split on Hemsphere 4.0.